I kept telling people these habitat projects will take years to show dividends, but the salmon proved me wrong. Magnificent wild salmon have fought their way up our rivers and fired our imaginations for thousands of years. But they're now on a path to extinction and we bear much of the blame. For centuries we've damaged the very rivers that gave them life. Now we have an opportunity to save one of the most inspiring creatures of our natural world. We can still give them a chance to thrive once again. But time is against us, we need to act now. Our wild salmon are exposed to many threats and pressures in rivers, estuaries, coastal seas and the open ocean. Some of these threats are beyond the control of fisheries managers. However, we can focus our efforts on ensuring that our wild salmon have free access to cold, clean water and ensure that our rivers provide a good home to return to for years to come. One of the reasons that we've targeted this tributary is it's got less than 2% woodland cover in the whole catchment and maybe because of that the summer temperatures can get really high the water temperatures here can get really high and that's really why we're targeting the riparian zone the buffer zone to get some woodland cover and that'll help shade it and take down that peak summer temperatures as well as providing uh, food from insects falling off the trees food from the leaves going into the river it's just multiple benefits from having these trees this is marine Scotland science data about temperature predictions for our rivers and the warmer the colour, the more vulnerable they are to increased uh, summer peak temperatures. And you can see us in the D, we are this stripe of yellow and this is really where we are targeting our tree planting to try and maximise shade and to sort of combat that predicted increases in temperatures. Rivers like the Grey Iron used to have trees along the riverbank for thousands of years it's us that's got rid of them. So we're just reinstating what used to be there along the, along the river banks to help shade those rivers and stop them getting too high. Because if we're getting 27 and a half degrees water temperature now, what's it going to be like with global warming in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 50 years? So we really need to do something now to protect the salmon. That, that's what we want in 50 years time. You know, this is exactly what we want. So this is the River Mick, another really important uh, salmon producing tributary. And the main thing you can see that we're doing here is trying to get trees established. And the trees are getting established here, not by the means of, of a large enclosure, which is our preferred method, but by a means of doing these small uh, enclosures. And the reason for that is that there's a lot of deer move through this valley and they need to be able to get from one side of the, the hills to the other without being blocked off by large enclosures. Yeah, so you can see the, the peat bank there and right at the bottom of the peat bank, maybe a metre and a half, two metres down, you can see large roots of, of trees which once would have been the, the, the woodland that covered this area. They reckon that peat on average puts down about a millimetre a year, so if that's two metres deep, that tree could potentially be 2,000 years old or even older. But it lets you know that this was once a wooded uh, landscape with lots of big trees falling into the river, creating a really complex wetland habitats as well as a really complex uh, river. And I'm pretty sure in those days, salmon were super abundant. And one of the things you can do when you've got a uniform bit of river is to add a bit of complexity to it. And the natural way to do that is to add what we call large woody structure, which is just basically whole trees dug into the, the bed or the bank of the river so that they're secure and they don't wash away in the flood. If you put these in, they mimic what would naturally be happening in the river. A river like this would have had trees on the bank, old growth trees. They would have fallen in in a flood or got undermined in the bank and fallen in 
and they would have created a really sort of complex structure of, of debris and that debris really creates the, the habitat that, that salmon like. So it creates deep sheltered pools, it creates shallow riffles, it creates spawning gravels. This is what they give the river complexity, what give the river resilience. They really do have multiple benefits. These structures on the Mick, like the ones on the Gairn, have had almost instant success for us. We had salmon spawning on at least a third of the structures that we put on. Salmon spawning adjacent to these structures. So these structures had created the right conditions for fish to feel comfortable and spawn. And I think their, their, their use by fish will just develop and develop in the, in the years to come. We'll get 25 years worth of environmental service from these bits of wood that we're putting in now. We're replacing the things that we've lost now, but eventually the trees that we plant will do this. So again, that's another reason why the trees are key, that they will provide that habitat structure that the, the, the fish need in rivers like these. I've just finished doing a session with 18 five to seven year olds uh, where we've been planting trees. We planted 50 trees today. They were fantastic. They dug all their own holes. They planted all their own trees. They put in all their own stakes. So yeah, I think the D is safe for the future with these kids. Oh, that's a good choice. That's a rowan. Yeah, it's a nice one. Ethan's got the stake. You gonna take that as well? Great. The importance of working with children and young people and the river is, is all about fostering that connection. It's about making sure that they understand that we are part of an ecosystem. It's about making them understand that we rely on that ecosystem. It's also about making them feel lucky, lucky to be where we are. We're in Aberdeenshire. We've got this amazing river. I go to schools in the middle of Aberdeen and sometimes children don't even know that we have a river going through town and we can't expect that generation to grow up and protect what is so precious if they don't know it exists. So my job is just to signpost it to them, uh, to point out that it's there and some of the amazing animals that live there in the hopes that they then go on to become the next generation of field officers and biologists and ecologists who are going to be protecting Aberdeenshire, the river, the planet for the future. So how are we going to be eggs? How do you think we could be eggs? Yeah, we're going to curl right up into a teeny, teeny, tiny ball. The smolt don't run forwards. The smolt go out to sea backwards. The salmon are able to smell, we think, their way home. So what we're going to do is we're going to run back to the river. Let's go. Back to the river, back to the river, back to the river. The salmon have got a problem. They're trying to get back to where they were born, but there's a waterfall. What do they do? Ten jumps, go! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the, the Easter Belty was another project we did last year. Almost at the same time we were putting the large wood structure in the mick, we did this large wetland restoration at Easter Belty. This part of, of the Belty at Easter Belty was canalised, was made completely straight. In fact, it was the straightest bit of river I've ever seen in my life. Uh, back in the 1860s to run alongside the railway line. So we've red counted, looked for salmon spawning in this area of the burn, you know, since I've been in the job for 25 years, no salmon ever spawned in this reach of the, the burn because it was canalised and it didn't have the right flows and the, and the right substrate. So it was a really, it was a, it was a bit of the belty burn that really wasn't functioning uh, naturally. So a project was uh, developed with uh, Seabec Eco Engineers who are you know, fantastic designers for restoration work and they developed a design that included all these linked wetlands in a meandering section of river. It was a huge earth moving job to do this. This is a 10 hectare site so this is quite significant uh, restoration and the icing on the cake for this story was the, the bit that you can see behind me, the nice riffle with the gravel. The diggers were actually still on site, they hadn't been moved off the site yet, but in November salmon and sea trout were seen spawning here and in total we recorded 15 reds in this section of the belty. So the first time since 1860 probably that salmon have actually used this stretch to spawn in. 
So we've moved from something that was a complete ditch to something that's got some ecological value and, and benefit for salmon. Now I kept telling people that these habitat projects will take years to basically show dividends, but the salmon proved me wrong and came in and spawned almost right on top of the works that we've done. I think that is fantastic. This year when the, when the biologists went to do the electrofishing on the site, they found salmon, they found trout, they found eels and they found lamprey. So brand new as that river is, that restoration is, it is beginning to pick up ecologically with lots of life. It's been fantastic for waders, dragonflies, all sorts of things. And it's just gonna get better in years to come. If we use the, the Easter Belty floodplain restoration as an example, that's a big project. We had a funder that wanted that, that project delivered within a year. So that's to design something like that takes time to get it through planning permission, to get it through flood risk assessments, to get it through all kinds of ecological assessments, and then to get a contractor and get it actually built. To do all that in a year is a huge achievement, but that is too tight to be comfortable. To give large scale projects a fighting chance, funding really needs to be over two years or three years. We need to ensure that we provide our fish with the best conditions to thrive. We've heard about efforts on the D to ensure our rivers are a good home for our wild salmon into the future. But what about when water quality isn't as good as it should be? This is one of the gravel introduction sites on the Blackwater of Dee. We've identified four different locations where we had good access on the road here and that we could get into particularly faster sections of the water because the whole theory of this introduction of gravel is to not to actually create the spawning beds or the finished product of what we want, but to allow the river processes to do that themselves. So this is one of the locations where we put in here. We've got nice fast flowing water here. And basically as the, we get flood events, it washes the river in and it creates the spawning riffle that we want for salmon and trout further downstream in there. Lovely stuff. You can see here, so a mix of gravels, pebbles, there's a few cobbles in here as well. There is some smaller finds as well, but this is all stuff that, that this river is missing. The, the dam's been there for 90 years, so we haven't had any movement like this going into the river, apart from leaving the river for, for 90 years. This is a good example here of what the river looks like below the dam. You can see there's next to no smaller substrates, it's pretty much just bedrock and a few larger boulders. So it's very limited habitat for, for many species. From our point of view, this has been a really good example of partnership working, although it's been frustrating. It's taken about four years to actually get the stuff from when we identified the problem and came up with a solution to actually get onto the ground. We don't think 500 tonnes is going to sort out the problem. It will have a localised impact, but we're talking about nearly 20 kilometres of this river. And you can see here, you're talking about 15, 20 metres wide. Nearly all of this is really, really good juvenile production area, which should have trout and salmon in it. But at the moment, it's really struggling with only hundreds of salmon running a river that should have thousands. And this, this could be the real catalyst of, of returning the fish back, back to this catch. If I can do something here to actually bring these back, then personally, that, 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 that's a win-win and a real driver from my point of view. Forestry is a major issue for rivers in Dumfries and Galloway. It was heavily forested in the 1960s and 70s with blanket Sitka spruce plantations. These were planted without any real environmental controls at the time. And in particular, there was heavy drainage of a lot of the upland peatland areas and planting right up to the edges of, of rivers. This is known as old style forestry, very, very damaging. And one of the key issues that it caused in, in Dumfries and Galloway is acidification. These very low pHs can cause a problem. They can kill the green eggs, the young eggs, but the biggest problem can be at hatching stage. So basically you, know, you have a, a round egg and the way that a fish egg hatches is, is an enzyme is released on the inside and that splits the two sides of the shell apart and the alvin comes out in the middle. If you have very low pH, that enzyme that is, that is released, that splits the egg, is denatured 
and basically the, the juvenile salmon in particular will die within the eggs so they won't hatch. Nobody ever sees anything but you, you'll lose all of these eggs underneath the gravel. The, the big issue is where we get these really, really extensive drainage programs for Sitka planting and it's historical. Um, it's important to recognise, you know, new forestry can't go on to, to, to areas of deep peats, um, but historically they did. So they had to be heavily, heavily drained to make them suitable for the trees to grow. And you can see some of these drains are really, really deep, well over a metre deep, to try and dry out the ground enough to be able to get the soil. So that really, really damages the, the, the peat. But the, the thing that we really recognised, and one of the things that we worked with SNH in the past on, was just how much poor water quality was coming off these damaged peatland bogs and how, how quickly you can actually improve water quality if, if you restore these bogs. These inspiring projects are just a couple of examples of the fantastic work that's happening in rivers across Scotland. As we've seen, these projects are big, complex and expensive. If we're serious as a country about saving our wild salmon, these projects need to be delivered at a far greater scale. The value of doing this is enormous and will provide long-term benefits to the whole ecosystem. We can't do this alone. Supporting this crucial work needs to become a national priority.